praise the Lord. We want to talk about fundamentals this morning. The fundamentals. If you don't get the fundamentals right, you're going to be lacking somewhere. Some people are good at teaching fundamentals, uh, and some are not. I've seen coaches that they were skilled in certain areas of coaching. Uh, they had a, uh, uh, a a real good understanding of it. Uh, they may have been good athletes. Uh, they understood some principles, but they really weren't locked down on fundamentals like they should have been. So therefore, when they went into coaching, they weren't winners, winners. They won, but they could not win the championships. They could not be consistent. The best coaches, the best teachers, whether a parent, uh, a school teacher, an auto mechanic, these people are, are really, they understand fundamentals. Fundamentals are fundamental to everything. And, and, and fundamentals, uh, all your life, you'll have to keep, keep going back to those. Um, it, when you start having issues, when things seem to not be going in the right direction, uh, you go back to fundamentals and, and see where you got off course. Um, and there's very a lot of examples of that in the Bible, in the New Testament and Old Testament alike. I want to try to cover some of this stuff this morning about fundamentals, how important they are, and it, relating to issues and things that are going on today in the world and in the church. Now, I've been pastor 31 years, and uh, um, I had parents that taught fundamentals. They did not teach fundamentals as well as they could have as other parents, but they worked with what they had. They did what they did. So, But then after being saved uh, in 72, the Lord allowed me to be around uh, men uh, that really taught fundamentals and some women too, that uh, uh, the teachers, uh, uh, individuals that I learned the importance of fundamentals. I know in my own life today, any lacking, any issues that I lack, it still goes back to fundamentals. Now, I want to relate this in another spiritual way. Um, whether the Jews recognize it or not, the Old Testament, or whether, and most Christians do, all everybody's been born again understands this. The fundamental of the Word of God is the cross of Jesus Christ. So, from that, whether you're looking back in the Old Testament or you're looking forward in the New, if you have the cross in the middle and you understand the fundamentals of that, you'll get understanding about the others. And uh, what I want to do this morning, I want to start uh, in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse uh, 14. And Father, I just pray you open the eyes of the understanding of your people this morning. That, Lord, they would hear what's being spoken. That they may use it, Father, to not only be a blessing, but be blessed in their walk. And bless others, Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness, or what fellowship has light with darkness? This is a fundamental to Christian living. Now the Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of it. We live in this world. We have our jobs, we go to school, we labor, we work, we play. But our fundamental as a Christian or a Jew that is trying to be pleasing to the Lord is to keep the fundamental of our home base, what we believe in, what, what we stand for, 
that we stand for that 24 hours a day and don't have a lapse in it by when we're out in the world, when we're in uh, relationships with people, that we don't be overcome by their fundamentals, what they believe in. If we say the fundamentals we have, we really believe. We, we, we treat others as the golden rules, as we want to be treated. Um, but that doesn't mean that we become like them to please them. We, we stand and do what we do because of the truth and the fundamentals that we've received. Trying to share this with others, there's a better way. Um, and in the scripture here, we, we've all heard this if you're a Christian. Don't be bound together. Don't be yoked together um, with unbelievers. It will wear on you if you hang around with people too closely. You can hang with people and not be too closely. you got to go to the job and work. But that doesn't mean you're married to them people and you're intimate with those people. This being... Uh, equally yoked is it's talking about intimate with people. Uh, actually, the word when a husband and wife it, it tells us in the scriptures that husbands and wives that the uh, the husband should cleave to the wife, be close, uh, connected, cleave, become one in their thinking, in their body, in their everything, spirituality, in the Lord, being agreement. So this is what's talking about about. You know, don't be unequally yoked with the world, with other people. Uh, don't be double-minded. You know, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord and be focused because that's that's where the blessing comes from. Now, even uh, the Jewish people understood is that I go through some scriptures, and obviously they should understand it because the Bible is a Jewish book. And, and we're told in the New Testament that the things that were written in the past were written for our sake today that we might know what would happen to us if we live likewise. Sodom and Gomorrah would be a great example. So um, we're not in the dark about what that is going to bring to those who walk in that, including nations. Okay? So what we're talking about is so important this morning. Because it, it's really part of the great deceptions in the in the last days, and I, I want and I want to show that to you. I want you to go to uh, Daniel uh, chapter two, verse forty three. Let's go over there. And when you go to Daniel two uh, forty three, it says, "And in <clears throat> that you saw the iron mixed with common common clay, they will combine with one another in the seed of men." But they will not adhere to one another, even as iron does not combine with pottery. <clears throat> and, and in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. And that kingdom will not be left for another people. It will be crushed and put an end to all. It will crush and put an end to all the other kingdoms. But it itself <clears throat> shall endure forever. Verse 45. And as much as you saw that a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands and that it crushed the iron and bronze, the clay, the silver and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will take place in the future. Uh, so the dream is true and its interpretation is trustworthy. Now, what we have in Daniel when he's prophesied about the last days is iron is going to mix with clay. And it's the last kingdom. You know, we have the statue of Nebuchadnezzar, the, the gold, the silver, uh, 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 the iron, and, and, and down through the process, what the statue is made out of, talking about the different uh, uh, time periods up to the end. And, and the last kingdom before Jesus Christ is one of iron and clay. And it, it makes the point, it doesn't mix. Iron and clay don't go together. They, they, they try to cleave to one another when it's talking like the husband and the wife. Uh, but they can't cleave together because they're not the same. That's why I was talking about being, don't be unequally yoked when you, a husband and a wife, when you get married, when you pick somebody where you go. If you're in agreement, uh, if you're 
of the same mind. Uh, you're, you're strong. Uh, you're undivided. You're like that undivided kingdom is coming at the end. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God in the flesh, this as a stone cut out of a mountain, uh, it's going to crush all the kingdoms before it, and it's going to rule and reign and never be put away because it's solid. The fundamentals is perfect. Now, we've got to understand that in these last days, that the great deception is, is it, it starts with not only can you be a little bit uh, unequally yoked and everything's going to be okay, to where ultimately in the end, you can mix iron with clay and think that'll work. When you write mine, y'all know better, it don't mix. The great example of today is, is men sleeping with men or women with women. It doesn't mix. It was not meant to mix. There's no agreement there. And so that kingdom cannot last just like anything else. If the fundamentals aren't right, the foundation ain't right, it don't work, it's not going to last. And so the whole world's being drawn into this thing. Now some people, these, these particular passages that I just read out of Daniel, was talking about the mixing of the iron and the clay. There's a lot of uh, 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 different opinions, uh, fallen angels with man, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 but but the bottom line is it's unequal with unequal. It's not, it's not equal. It's two. It's putting two. To, it don't go. It does not go. And this is what fundamentals is all about. That's why you have to. A good coach that wins and wins and wins, and I've known a few, uh, really good ones, uh, good ones. They went over the fundamentals and over the fundamentals and over the fundamentals and over the fundamentals. And anybody that ever had a coach or a teacher that did that, they are grateful to this day because they realize then in areas that they don't have problems that they're that I mean. It's because they got the fundamentals right. This is what life is. If you don't get the fundamentals right, you're, uh, the Bible says consistency is a jewel. You're not going to be consistent. Now, we're going to have our issues, and nobody's perfect but Jesus. We have him in us. The Holy Ghost be perfect as he is perfect. But the principle of, through the sufferings that Jesus went through, uh, uh, he was made perfect by that. Um, uh, through what he suffered, he was made uh, perfect through that. Uh, uh, God coming in the flesh down, he suffered so he could be a perfect high priest and understand. So uh, even though we're not going, we are going to have sin. If you say you have no sin in your life, there's going to be, we're going to fall, we're going to fail. But and, and it, it just, it, it proves the fundamentals. I mean, Paul gets in a conversation with some people. They say, Paul says, you, some people say that we're saying it just sin, man, so God can get the glory and praise God and prove God is right. He said, God forbid, God forbid that you would do that. And, and, and those that are going to be condemned behind teaching that, they deserve exactly what they get. But you will fall. But if you have the fundamentals right, the cross, if you've learned it's been consistent, you understand that, that we don't glory in anything but the cross. We go back to the fundamentals. You'll get up and you'll go on. Uh, you'll have the victory. You'll make it. So <clears throat> it's so important today. Like, for instance, and what we're going to go into is there's so many Things here you could deal with, but what I specifically want to deal with, a minute ago we brought up about the mixing of men and women sexually, trying to put two things together that don't go together. Well, it, it breaks down a lot of areas, like, for instance, and, and, and the devil uses this witchcraft and sorcery to confuse people. Um, growing up, you used to hear all this stuff about blacks and whites should not marry. And until you get saved, until you get saved, you just don't understand. You you don't even understand what the issues are. 
But even those who were not saved, who were cool and hip, they did it just and they were did it just because those people said don't don't do it. Okay. But then those people, without being saved, they go through a process of time black and they turn into the biggest racists in the world. They were the ones that went out and mixed and did all that stuff with black and white and whatever mixed around. And then they, oh, they come to the light. They understand, you know, hey, you know, uh, just from being around people who are racist themselves and go, um, you shouldn't do that, you know, and, 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 and just but uh, 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 twice the sinners just really, really messed up. But they don't have the fundamentals. They don't understand the point, what the Lord is saying in all of these issues. See, the Bible says when we leave here, we're going to a kingdom that is spiritual. God is spirit. Those who worship God, worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, we're going to a place where there's not going to be any children born. We're spirit as God is. I think the best example is that when you see Jesus in the book of Revelation, uh, He's like lightning. You see through the scriptures that the the, the the spirits from the other world are like lightning. It's so high and above. But the point uh, being here is, is that it's being equally yoked in your thinking. It's a principle. Uh, but none of them can be understood or carried out until man's really born again and understood understands why that is put there they'll twist it they'll instead of something being understanding what it was taught it says this for love you know it'll all be about hate um and here's i think this is a great way to explain it after i got saved i really understood because of being born again in spirit and having the holy ghost that somebody come to me and say hey man would you let your daughter marry a black man I said, man, if you don't know Jesus, don't come anywhere near my door. Because once you're born again, you understand the issues, all the racism, all the garbage. You understand you have to have the separation, understand why the separation to get into the fundamentals and the principles of these things. They're examples like the Old Testament. You know, it says that, I mean, there's are the covenants and the law, uh, the, uh, the Old Testament. Uh, 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 Paul says, well, what good is it to be a Jew? And, and, uh, they asked Paul that, then, you know, if, if it's Jesus and in the Old Testament, and, and, and that's passed away, what good was it to be a Jew? He said, much, 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 much. Because remember, that is a fundamental foundation. The New Testament is set up on that. If you read the New Testament, you want to understand why. Then you go back to the cross, but it'll go back to the cross and Old Testament and show you, it's a, 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 you know, it relates back to one another. The Old Testament fits with the New Testament like a glove. Thank you, Jesus. Now, uh, and then that, and then the cross confirms it all. If you go that fundamental about the cross, um, when a man gets saved or a woman. You get filled with God's love. And you become one. It says, they'll know you're my disciples by your love. Um, the hatred is gone. The old man's died. You have understanding. Instead of going around and saying, hey man, I'm not prejudiced. Man, I don't even see color. Well, I know you're racist. You're a lying dog. Because you're already saying there's something wrong with color. You know, God made all the colors. They are beautiful. But you can't see it because you're spiritually dead. Okay? So once you get born again and you understand the issue of the Spirit, you love being around born again Christians. You love being around born again Christians. And it doesn't matter where they come from or what color they are. Because what's on the inside is beautiful. It's God. It's Jesus. But we're living in this last days that um, we're being try the devil's trying to convince the world that you can mix iron with clay. You can mix things that don't mix together. 
and that's going to bring nothing but disaster. It's not going to produce anything but disaster and death. It's going to be weak. And it talks about that last kingdom in Daniel before Jesus' the kingdom comes. The kingdom is weak. Now, uh, I've got two passages, one out of Nehemiah, one out of Ezekiel. I want to give you the examples out of the Old Testament about how important this is to God. Uh, you know, when you talk about being unequally yoked, you're basically talking about being double-minded. Okay? And the Bible says um, um, uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Weak, weak, weak. Okay? Let's go to me, Nehemiah uh, chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 13. And in Nehemiah chapter 13, uh, beginning with verse uh, 23 to 30, I want to read. Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah 13, 23 to 30. And in those days, I also saw that the Jews had married women from Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. As for their children, half spoken the language of Ashdod, and none of them was able to speak the language of Judah, but the language of his own people. So I contended with them and cursed them and struck some of them and pulled out their hair uh, uh, beards and made them swear by God, you shall not give your daughters to their sons nor take of their daughters for your sons or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin regarding these things? Yet among the many nations, there was no king like him, and he was loved by his God, and God made him king over all of Israel. Nevertheless, the foreign women caused even him to sin. Uh, do we <clears throat> then hear about you that you have committed all this great evil by acting unfaithfully against our God by marrying foreign women? Even one of the sons of Jehada, uh, the, the son of Elshahib, uh, the high priest, was a son-in-law to Sambala the Horonite, so I drove him away from me. Remember them, oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and the Levites. Thus I purified them from everything foreign and appointed duties for the priest and the Levites each in his uh, task. And I arranged for the supply of wood at appointed times and for the first fruits. Remember me, oh my God, for good. Now, the Jews have come back from Babylon. And remember, this is Old Testament. There's a, there's a truth, and ex, a, a foundational truth here. <clears throat> and it is that you cannot mix iron and clay. You can't mix oil and water. And the reason God gave the law and the Jews and the, uh, 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 to, to the Jews... The covenants to the Jews, um, uh, theirs was the fathers. He gave them the law. This is what you live by. This, this is, I'm putting this out to the world because I'm getting ready to do the New Testament in Christ and all that. But this foundation has to be laid first. Okay. Well, the example was that, look, I want you marrying other Jewish people. I want you to marry of your, of your tribe and tribes. I want you all thinking the same. I want you pulling in the same direction. I want it to go smooth so it'll work together and you'll be strong. Okay. Well, it, this is not a man woman issue. This is being equally yoked issue. Okay. So, so these guys, because they've been in Babylon uh, and they're, they come home uh, to, to, to build a temple again and put up the wall and do all these issues. Man, they've got foreign women. They brought women with them, foreign women from, from Babylon and other nations. And, Man, these women don't believe the same thing these men do. And being double-minded is, is, be, uh, is being unequally yoked. And when the Bible says that men are, are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, there's no more pleasure than a woman unless there is something, uh, something wrong with you. I mean, on the spiritual realm, your relationship to God, that fellowship with God is more pleasurable by far than that, but in earthly terms, the love of a woman, the tenderness, what God made a woman to be, there's nothing more pleasurable than that, but here's where it goes wrong. When you get, if, if physically the pleasurable together 
if y'all live together and y'all don't believe the same way, that means you're not pulling the same way. You're battling and fighting all the time. It's a hellhole. All you have is sex. And that winds up, you lose that too because you get mad enough with that person and stay in conflict with that person. You you wind up despising that person. You're disgusted by the mess. And so the family gets broke up and divorced and nobody stays together because there's no agreement there. And this is how it's being set up in the Old Testament, explaining to the through the priest and the Levites and the children of Israel, look, you have to be equally out. It's a spiritual principle that's coming, how you get into the kingdom of God. Because Jesus said, hey, look, uh, Father, uh, uh, I'm in agreement with you. Uh, uh, the apostles are in agreement with me, with you, and, 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 and we're one. And, and I pray for those who will believe, uh, uh, who will believe upon what the apostles tell them that we're all that we're all one because it's all, it's in that agreement that the blessing comes. A house divided cannot stand. So uh, this principle in the Old Testament is being made is is uh, that we're going to see in the New Testament. We've read it. Start with not to be unequally yoked. You have to be of the same mind. It's not enough. To just be of the flesh. If that's what it is, it shows that you've got your fundamentals wrong. You don't get it. You you just don't get it. Because when when the flesh is dead, even long after the flesh is dead, even as an old man or old woman, you still got life to live. And if this thing is not about the joy really comes, the victory really comes in the Lord by being one in the Lord, in agreement with the Lord, in agreement with one another. That's your church. Your first church was the husband and the wife. But the fundamentals is in your whole life and all the things that you're doing, you need to know that you're in agreement with God with what you're doing. And you're staying one with God. And uh, you don't want to bring nobody into your house that's not in agreement with God. Because in the time that you could be in agreement with God and fellowship and loving God, you're fighting somebody in your house that's your own enemy is not in agreement with God. So he's telling these, these he got so upset. He, Golly, you guys, you guys are priests and Levites. You don't have the fundamentals down. You married these women who don't think like you and have little gods they brought from their father. And your children are all tore up and y'all are fussing and fighting. And y'all want to divorce. Da, 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 da. He got so mad he pulled hair out. He pulled beards out. Not because he hated the people. What are you doing? You're destroying your children. You're destroying your lives. You're going against God. Now, that, that was those individuals. What I want to look at now, we'll look at Ezekiel. Look at Ezekiel chapter 44. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 44. Ezekiel chapter 44. And when we go to Ezekiel chapter 44, uh, which is talking about the duties of the temple priest. And uh, in, in chapter 44, beginning in verse 9, Thus says the Lord God, No foreigner uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh of all the foreigners who are among the sons of Israel shall enter my sanctuary. But the Levites who went far from me when Israel went astray, who were astray from me after their idols, shall bear the punishment for their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having oversight uh, at the gates of the house and ministering in the house. They shall slaughter the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister to them. Because they ministered to them before their idols and became a stumbling block of iniquity to the house of Israel, therefore I have sworn against them, declares the Lord God, and they shall uh, bear the punishment for their iniquity. And they shall not come near to me to serve me as a priest. To me, uh, nor come near to any of the holy things, to the things that are most holy, but they shall bear their shame and their abomination which they have committed. Yet I will appoint them to keep charge of the house, of all its services, and of all that shall be done in it. But the Levitical priests, the sons of Zadok, who kept charge of my sanctuary when the sons of Israel went astray from me, shall come near to me to minister to me, and they shall stand before me to offer me the fat and the blood, declares the Lord God. Now, what we have here is, it's like, it, 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 it really is a eternal security uh, a text from the New Testament that you cannot lose your salvation once you got it. 
but it's talking about the Lord is it, it, the Lord has it, it, is dealing with Ezekiel and he and, and, and dealing with with the priest of Israel, um, uh, those who minister in the house of God. They have defiled God's house because they were double-minded because of the women, because of greed, because of fear of other people, because of lust. They started living in a way that was not pleasing to God. And the consistency of that made them not only defile themselves, but made them bring into teaching the temple and do things in God's house sanctuary that were wrong, that defiled the sanctuary, the house of God. And so after when, when God is dealing with this, he said, now look, because you guys did this, you cannot come into the Holy of Holies. You cannot come in close to me and minister to me and get that special blessing. I'm not kicking you out, but I'm moving you further out there to minister, to uh, uh, to burn offerings and to do stuff. And, you, and, and, and when you could have been back here doing this, you have to do this. Uh, you're going to bear the shame and realize, hey, you know, I could have been there. I could have done this, but I, I fell away and I went away from the Lord. The Bible says the Lord is married to the backslider. The Bible says God hates divorce. God doesn't divorce. Now I understand the principle you're trying you'd bring up at this point, talk about God divorcing Israel. But if you read the scriptures thoroughly and understand what he's saying, it's a principle being made not from his end to the man, but from man to man, understanding what we do to God, that we we treat him uh, uh, unfaithfully uh, and walk away from him. It's it's and, and, and it's divorced from the issue of the new covenant coming. But it's not that 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 uh, heaven and earth will pass. It is heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Uh, the Jews have an everlasting covenant, but they're not made complete. It's not made complete without us in the New Testament, and we see the fulfillment in the whole picture in the vision of the whole thing. Jesus said, "He says, Father, every, everyone you gave me, I lost none, but the son of perdition." The one that was meant to go to hell was going to hell all the time. That was not mine, but these. The ones who messed up, fell out, didn't pray, denied me, doubted, tripped. I didn't lose none of them. I didn't lose none of them. And this is the God that we serve. And it's another reason why if we really look at the fundamentals of it, we want to get closer to him. We want to learn his ways. We realize it's only a blessing. It's only a gift. It's only the betterment. It's, it's, it's our greatest heart's desire that God has put in us. And we've got to understand in these last days, that, and, and, and Daniel talks about it, it's the last day's kingdom. Trying to mix iron with clay. It don't mix. It, any, when you mix something like that, it don't mix. It's only weak. It can't last. It's not a sure foundation. These are not racist principles. It's saying to the believer, whatever color you are, marry someone equally yoked that believes as you believe, but not and sees it as you see it. Not only, not only from that standpoint, It's much more than that. But that's that has to be accepted first as a fundamental. How can two walk together unless they be in agreement? If I'm born again and the Bible tells me not to be unequally yoked and believers should be with believers, not unbelievers, righteousness with wickedness and darkness, I accept that as a fundamental. So my principle here on out is that's what I'm looking to do. And if you accept that fundamental, you'll move on to the next. So the point is, with, 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 with black and white, with brown and yellow, with red and black, with white and whatever, the issue is a heart issue. 
Are you in agreement? Do you walk together in agreement? That house won't be divided. It will bring glory to God and it will win others to Christ and it will show others the direction and it will be solid. It'll be the one solid thing in the earth like the salt and the light. God's ways are not to put us down. God's ways are not to hold us back because when we were made, he said it, it, we were made. It was good that we were made. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. The most precious thing he had for us. We're loved. But these fundamentals is, is like a parent raising a child and God deals with us as fathers with sons. I'm telling you these things. I'm showing you things called these fundamentals. It's the only way it's going to work. And this world in all of its witchcraft and sorcery time to put a, a round uh, a, a block in a square uh, 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 in a square or a square in a round, it just won't work. It will lead to disaster. And ultimately when all, all of these issues Do you know the Lord? Have you believed the testimony? Have you believed the report about the Savior Jesus, the Son of God in the flesh, that came to redeem us, that came to release us from our sins by His blood that was shed? That great love, no greater love have a man that has laid down his life for his friend, that the Son of God, God in the flesh, laid down His life for us. Because it meant so much to him. You know, we were created by God. And his creation meant enough to him to lay his life down for him and take it back up again. In this world where, and especially now, 2015, October, when everything is just, if you're a born again Christian today, you're looking and you're seeing like all these signs are coming together. I mean, we are looking at the days that's been prophesied and we've heard for all these years. I've been saved 43 years and I've heard this stuff for 43 years and I've lived, I'm looking at it. I all the, These things are here. The coming of the Lord is near. You need to make your peace with God. If you're not where you're supposed to be as a Christian, you've been trying to mix things that don't mix. In your heart, the Lord's speaking to you this morning about these things, that you're trying to put things together that God never intended to be together. And it's not about the color of your skin. It's about the condition of your heart, right and wrong. Jesus, and I see this often, one of the most important things that Jesus ever said to anybody, including a Christian, is let your yes be yes and your no be no for everything else is evil. God is not in the confusing business. It's fundamental. Those truths are out there everywhere to find because uh, God has put a, it in all men everywhere to know that he is God and what he requires. If you've been disobedient, repent. Lord, I'm sorry. I know you didn't want this. I know I made my own choice. I did it my way and I've suffered behind it. But Lord, I repent. I repent, Jesus. I'm so sorry. This suffering has come on me. I brought it. But you warned me and you told me. He said, if you confess your sins, Jesus said, God says he's faithful to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That we can start again on the right road and deal with these fundamentals. And if you don't know the Lord this morning, and this burden that you carry, this yoke that you have is so heavy, you just can't carry it anymore. You feel like I, you cannot go on. And you need a Savior. Well, there is a Savior, and His name is Jesus. And He loves you so much. You who He created. That He laid down His life. He came to earth in the flesh of a man. Suffered as a man that He might be a perfect high priest to inter lives to intercede for us daily. To bring us safely to his heavenly kingdom by his spirit. He did all this for you. If you'll just believe. Repent of your sins. Lord I'm so sorry. You died where I should have died. Thank you for this great love. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. This is what Jesus wants to do today. For everybody who's listening. He is a Savior. A savior, a complete savior. You can, and when you're saved, it means saved. Like being pregnant, you're pregnant or you're not. 
There's no half saved. There's no half pregnant. You, you are or you're not. Jesus loves you today.